All right, guys, we're joined today uh, by Dexter Lawson. He is one of Central Connecticut football's stars. Um, he's a defensive back entering the year. We talked to him just a little bit about what his thoughts were uh, about practice in a pandemic. And today we're going to discuss how that went um, and what he's up to today. So without further ado, let's get this started. All right, so um, of course we'll start off right now. Uh, we're joined by Dexter Lawson again. Uh, mm-hmm. Dexter, I think last time we talked, it was the eve of you guys starting practices. So kick things off, just like let us know how that went. Was there anything you didn't expect to happen that did? Was it, did it go smoothly? Um, it definitely did. Practice was definitely going smoothly. Um, it was uh, good to get back out there with the guys since we, thing it was like a good six or seven months like layover since we actually been together and practiced together so um it was definitely good to be out there with everybody and you know back out there with your brothers and stuff so it was fun um so I know I was talking to Tyshawn earlier this week and he had talked about how you know being in Connecticut and having a lot of CT players he was able to you know hook up with Kyle I think was from his same town and get some routes and stuff with him like, have you been able to do some work at home as well, apart from practice? And, you know, what have you been focusing on uh, since the pandemic started, I guess? Um, yeah, definitely. I've been, I've been, ever since it started, I've been working out, you know, um, I was keeping my same regimen of, uh, you know, waking up early. I was hitting the field at seven every morning. And then I would have like a, a little rest period where I'll go probably do some work or something like that. And then I'll, I'll go hit it hit it again in the afternoon, probably get some weights or I'll probably go back on the field depending on the day or, or how my body was feeling. But yeah, I definitely kept it going. And um, I also have a trainer, with, I, tra- I train with um, Supreme Athletes. He's one of my mentors, uh, Stack Williams, um, just throughout the whole process being with him. And then another DB coach that I always work with is uh, Coach uh, Martin Manson. He's the head coach at um, Crack now. So um, yeah, I stayed, I stayed in touch with those guys and just kept, kept uh, my training going just because we never knew when we were going to come back. So I just was trying to prepare for whenever we were going to come back that I made sure that I was going to be ready and I wasn't going to have any steps lost from from the pandemic. So, you know, with the year off and with you guys not having games and obviously there were some schools that did, was it hard for you at times to like see, you know, some Mac action or something on, on a Friday night or something? And yeah, or was it something that you had to kind of sit, step back from? Yeah, it was it was definitely frustrating to see a, a lot of guys, a lot of my friends are actually like, you know, still playing and things like that. But it was it's kind of good to because while you're in the season, you don't really get to watch as many uh, other other people play because you're playing. And a lot of times on gate on game day, your day could be so filled up with like things to do that you don't get to watch any games. Like if you have like a 6.30 game, you may be able to catch maybe a 12 o'clock game, but anything past that, you are already like in in positions to like try to start, start working out for your game. So like it was definitely frustrating to watch teams play. And, you know, it's kind of, it's that thing where it's like, why, why couldn't we play? You know, you kind of feeling upset and you kind of feel left out, but it was, it was, it's, it's fine. I mean, I, I've grown to adapt to it. I mean, I can't, sit up here and cry over spoiled milk uh but just to watch everybody else play and kind of learn from everybody else and kind of still dissect the game as if i was in the game it's still i'm a, i'm appreciative that i still am able to do that and it's, it's nice to watch other teams play though so now that i know you've been watching college football i need to know who is your top four this year my top four um well my favorite my favorite uh my favorite team has always been Ohio State, but um, I feel like it's Notre Dame, um, Ohio State, and then it's just like I, I'll put I'll put Clemson back up there because they had their um they were out out of their quarterback or whatever. But it's been just so much going on like this whole season. It's feel like like a lot of teams. I feel like they weren't prepared to play. Like they had already chalked it up because of the whole pandemic thing. And then 
uh, like, you know, the conferences came back and was like, you know, we're going to play and things like that. So I feel like a lot of teams are like not doing as well, as well as they should be like Penn State, like Penn State is 0-4, 0-4, over 3 right now. And who would have thought like Penn State would be losing, would lose like four games in a row, especially their first four games. So I feel like it's Notre Dame, Ohio State, um, Clemson, and then it's, I feel like it's up, it's up, it could go anyway after that. That's what I feel like. So, I, th- I obviously, I think Ohio State produces the best NFL talent. Um, but, you know, there's been so much, like, weird, like, just weird things going on with how we, like, view teams this year with, like you said, Clemson and Trevor Lawrence and stuff. With that being said, is there also a part of you, other than the part that misses the game, is there a part of you that's, like, damn, I'm kind of glad I wasn't, like, dealing with some of this stuff, like, with just getting tested all the time and false positives, all that stuff. Yeah, definitely, and that's why I would have rather rather them just, like, completely cancel everybody's season because I knew something like this would come into play where it's, like, you know, you have one of your top players have come down with, with the virus, and now they miss two weeks of, of playing, and some teams, like like the Big Ten, they already started, um, I can't remember how many weeks it was, but like five weeks later than, than the ACC. So it's like, you already missing two weeks on top of you may have already missed however many weeks because the ACC started before, way before everybody else. So it's like, you know, it's too many like things to toss up in the air and um, it's just nothing was certain. So, I mean, part of me is like, yeah, uh, I'm kind of glad that I didn't have to play because if I would have came down with it and I had to sit out for two weeks, I would have been like, because in the football season, especially the way they shortened the season out, if you miss two weeks, you're missing almost like a quarter of the season. Like the Big Ten, you miss two weeks, you're missing like a quarter of their season. So it's like, it's tough, but I mean, like it, it is what it is. I'm kind of happy I didn't I didn't have to go through that, but I still would have loved to play at the, at the same time. That's what I feel like would be like the most difficult is like so many guys who are the most talented, you know, you see guys like you, you see a bunch of other guys who are extremely dedicated and just want to be out there. So I just Mm -hmm. like, especially with some kids who like say would be asymptomatic or something. I just couldn't imagine like the frustration of like sitting on the sidelines or while not being there and watching Mm -hmm. your team go out there. Like it's just such a weird situation. Yeah. Um, So for you guys, I know there was, you know, no no games to be played but was there any concern with you guys going to practice among the team that you know there was any danger to the situation just with the virus and everything or was that something that like I mean you guys seemed on top of it as far as doing it as safely as possible yeah um I feel like we uh we probably like you said we did it as good as we possibly can um I feel like you know the coaches and and the administration, even the uh, you know, the everybody on the uh, athletic board, even with the other teams, I feel like we um controlled it as long as we possibly could. Um, it's unfortunate that we couldn't have finished it the way we wanted to, but we got a, like a lot further than anybody would have expected. So I mean, I, it just hats off to everybody from the players all the way to the coaches, all the way to you know the faculty members, just to be able to you know keeping keeping each other safe uh social distancing i know the coaches like they had a thing where um like they're in phase one i believe it was they would only um they would like the offensive coaches will be in the building while the defensive coaches will be at home and they'll flip-flop every day so just having that type of plan to where that we can you know kind of limit the contact between each other uh, i felt like that was a great plan even in the weight room um we had like it was, we weren't all the way spaced out, but we were, we weren't as together as we usually are, but it still made sense. And we were still able to be effective in the weight room and still ma- maintain social distancing. So I feel like the plan that we had, it kind of, it worked. It definitely worked uh, better than we thought it was going to work. So that's a plus. And you've had a lot of time to work on your game, uh, obviously to head into the spring and into the fall season. What, in your opinion, is the one biggest takeaway you've had since starting, you know, training and practicing again? Um, I just, you could just see that, and I'm just being completely honest, some people didn't do what they were supposed to do over the, uh, over the pandemic. And it's actually a good thing that we didn't have a season. That's another reason why I'm happy we didn't have a season because some people 
you know, they were, they were just sitting on their butts all, all, all the, the whole pandemic. And, you know, you're going to have guys like that. I mean, you can only control what you can control. And when you give people a lot of leeway, a lot of guys who, who probably aren't as mature understand how crucial these times are to, you know, take, still take care of your body and still, you know, prepare just in case we may have a season. Um, it's hard because you don't actually have that hands on. You're not really, it's hard for some people to be, to just do something without being pushed. And I feel like it, it takes a different type of person to still continue their daily regimen and still stay motivated, even when there's little motivation around them. When everybody, when every time you turn on the news, you see that your season may be canceled or that things aren't going the right way. So it's kind of hard, but it, I feel like it's just, you have to keep that same mindset to just like, you know, look for the better days and prepare for the better days because you never know like when, when we're going to get out there. So I feel like one thing that I took away from this pandemic that um, we definitely have a lot, a lot of work to do just recovering from the pandemic. But I feel like as practice was going on, we kind of picked up almost where we, where we left off at, but I feel like uh, both, both sides of the ball were competing uh, with each other very well. And um, it was definitely a, a few dog fights out there where it's just the competitive nature where it's just, we, we all been itching to come back. So it's just, fun to be out there and that's just the nature that you want to have um, between a team when your offense is going at your defense your defense is going at your offense and it's just you know two bulls in a ring just fighting against each other and it's just that's how you know you have a, a good football team developing can you take us through one of those you know one of the memorable dog fights for you was there like some Antonio Hall DeAndre Hopkins like jarring going <laughs> on like what was it like yeah yeah um nah uh we we uh you know, we it, well, it's a lot of testosterone, so it's sometimes we may get uh, real physical, but um, you know, a lot of times, a lot of like um, a lot of throughout the practices, a lot of people like to highlight um, my matchup with me and um, Tyshawn, like every practice. But me and me and Tyshawn, you know, we talk every day, and that's like my brother. We do everything together um, off the field, so it was never nothing more than football, but. We'll go at each other like throughout practice. We'll go at each other because we know that we're each other's top dog and we want to see each other, you know, go to the next level. And the only way we are is if we push each other to, to our limits. So, you know, we a lot of times we'll match up with each other just by how the offense is set up and by how our defense is set up. So we'll match up with each other a lot. And, you know, you could just feel throughout the practice that everybody's eyes is just on just us two just going at it and just who's going to win the rep and who's going to who's going to come out on top this time and who's going to come out on top the next time. So that competitive nature, that just drives me. I mean, that's what I really look forward to in practice. And, and I'm pretty sure he does too. And, and a great athlete that he is and how competitive he is. So, you know, just one of those type of dog fights. And then even with our linebackers and, and our, uh, and our, um, our up front, like what our, what our D line and our linebackers and the, the linemen, the offensive linemen, you know, they, they go at it and they bang heads just as well. And I, like I said, it's a lot of testosterone built up. So, you know, when you guys, when you a whole bunch of dudes just letting out a lot of testosterone, it, it could get, it could get messy. I'm, I'm pretty sure anyone who enjoys watching any sport would like get some popcorn to watch you and Tyshawn, like go at it. And, yeah, you know, yeah. that's, that's kind of one of the things I think is so cool about you guys. You know, everyone knows how dominant you guys were last year. You've had great success, you know, at least in your time here. But one thing I think is really not focused on enough is that guys like you and Tyshawn were from Connecticut and here playing at Central. And I think it's just such an important thing. I think we just saw someone, uh, I forget his name, but from Seton Hall, he just signed with the Knicks. You know, we've seen Connecticut develop into a place that harbors really good athletes. So what does it mean like for you playing, playing with guys like Tyshawn and so many other guys from Connecticut on the team and being able to play in New Britain? Um, I feel like we all understand that we have a mission to, you know, put ourselves on the, not only ourselves on the map, but the whole state on the map, just for the younger, the youth that are coming up after us, just to be able to ha make sure they have a voice and that they are able to be seen that, you know, us CT players, yeah, we from a small state, but we can, we could ball with the best of them and we won't back down from anybody. And it's just a type of culture that we want to give off that, you know, everybody from Connecticut is just going to, you're going to get them with a chip on their shoulder just because of where they're from, because we know that 
everybody looks down on us because of, you know, the whole stereotype that Connecticut, like people don't even, it's some people down South that don't even know Connecticut's a real. No idea. So it's just, you know, every, every time, every, wherever we go, we have to be able to prove ourselves. And, you know, every time we get these big schools, they always have so much to say because we're from Connecticut, but, you know, just to be able to, uh, you know, back our stuff up and, and let these people know, uh, and make sure that we change their mind and prove ourselves right. Not not so much proving them wrong, but proving ourselves right that we're we're good enough to you know compete with the top of them, with to, with the top dogs. So, I mean that's just our mission, and I feel like we all we speak about it, but we all already know that in our head. Like going in, no matter what, we're from Connecticut. They're gonna look down on us, so we have to make sure that we are as good as we think we are. And that's I just think that's such a cool storyline to have in a in a team and i love the tweets you guys are having i think it was yesterday or the day before about you know the mm -hmm. uconn central game that would be must watch mm -hmm. tv every single year i mean i don't understand how it's something scheduled already but i mean mm -hmm. yeah it's um it's we already have them on the schedule for uh the what was it 2022 senior, yeah the year after my yep this the year after my senior year but it would be so much better if we were if we were able to get that game scheduled you know like next year and i feel like if the state needs it because you know uh not to be down on uconn but they're not really having their their decline and you know and even with their stands like it's real empty in there like every home game so i feel like if to you put have, it lightly like, yeah, yeah if you have two of the uh you know the top teams in connecticut um, just go at each other. I think it would definitely bring the whole state to the, to one place. And I feel like we could, you know, we could have Rensselaer a little bit packed. And I feel like our team feels like we're the best team in Connecticut. You know, we're not scared of those guys or any type of thing. We just feel like, you know, some of those guys may have gotten that opportunity from, you know, they probably lived in another state or they probably had bigger offers and then, and then, uh, UConn offered them and they wanted to stay home or whatever the case may be. But, you know, we feel as though we're the better team. And I feel like the the state doesn't really know who is the better team because, you know, we, we we're dominating and they're kind of losing, but they're at a, a they're at a FBS level. So it's kind of hard to judge and kind of, kind of hard to compare the two. But I feel like if we just have the game, we don't have to compare anymore. We could just see for ourselves. I, I agree. I think it just should end the debate right there. Um, mm -hmm. I want to circle back to something you said, not trying to be the shade room or anything like that, but I did yeah. want to get back to uh, how you said some players weren't, you know, well conditioned enough heading into um, heading into practice. Was that just all mm -hmm. the freshmen? Like, I would just assume it's all the freshmen, right? Um, no, it, 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 to be honest, it wasn't. It wasn't only only freshmen. It was, it was a, a few older guys that weren't taking care of business. But I mean, like I said, uh it's a good thing that we didn't have a season so that we wouldn't have been exposed. Those guys wouldn't have been exposed in front of another opponent, but you know, it's just, sometimes you got to take your brother and you just got to make sure he's locked in and you got to, and, and like I said, some people aren't as motivated and you got to be able to, some people need to be pushed before they, they actually go and do something on their own. So like I said, it's, it's a, it, we're fortunate that we didn't have the season due to that. But I feel like if we already felt like we were going to have a season, maybe those guys would have took it more seriously over the pandemic. Maybe not. I mean, I can't really call it, but yeah. Sometimes you got to, some people got to have a wake up call. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Sometimes you just got to get, that's exactly what it is. You got to get a wake up call. I was going to say something else, but that's probably not what I should say. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll leave it with this, Dexter. You know, we've got a couple months until we're going to be seeing Central Football again but I know you're going to be still hard at work. You know, what's, what's your one point of focus that's going to get you through these next few months? Um, I feel like just trying to improve and be a lot better than I was last, last season. And I feel like this season is going to be more harder for me in a way, not as far as like, you know, playing a game of football and, you know, learning the defense. I feel like it's going to be, harder for me to uh to get stats like I had last year because you know everybody knows that I'm the I'm the number one corner now and um and everybody knows my stats from last year I had six interceptions and things like that so a lot of times what, what teams will do is we'll try to take 
your top player out of the game by not throwing him the ball or things like that. So if the only way I could get stats is if the ball comes my way. So I feel like my focus this off season is to more try to figure out how I can get the ball to be thrown my way so that I don't have to, I want, I'm not getting out of position and then I get caught sleeping or something like that. So just finding different ways to, to get involved in, um, because it is not like the ball is just going to be coming to me, you know, as much as it was last year, basically is what I'm trying to say. So that's my main focus this, this, uh, off season. And also to improve my speed and, um, my, uh, my return ability. I feel like, uh, I definitely could have had um, a few returns to the house last year and I didn't take advantage of the opportunities that I had. So just correcting those mistakes and going back and just, you know, kind of, kind of breaking everything down as I have been with all this time, I've been able to break down film more than I needed to, but I mean, just being able to break everything down and kind of figure out what I could have done or what I can do going into next year to uh, put myself and my team in a better opportunity to, you know, take some, Take some special team kicks to the house. So I want I want a confirmation here. Over under two house calls next year. Over two. Over two. Yeah. Over All two. right. All right. Great. That's the well, goal. Dex, Dexter, <laughs> thank you so much uh, for doing this today. Um, we appreciate it a lot. Uh, stay safe. Stay healthy, and keep working. Appreciate you, Ryan. It's always a pleasure.